visto far così per rivolgersi a lui ma il microfono con cioè se io faccio così si sente l'effetto faccio così non so
Egregio e caro Presidente, uh, Prime Minister, we are uh, deeply grateful and full of esteem and friendship because we can welcome you among us. I can uh, assure you that we think that your presence today is very important for us. This is a very difficult time for the life of our country. It's a difficult period for the world, and we are sure that uh, you will start your uh, presentation by speaking of Europe. We know that Europe is uh, very dear to your heart, and this is a very burning issue for this period and full of perspectives for the future as well. Mr. Prime Minister, authorities, dear friends, uh, we have just inaugurated uh, the uh, 34th uh, meeting, which uh, is entitled The Human Person, a State of Emergency. There are a lot of emergencies to be tackled in today's world. Uh, many people find it difficult uh, to uh, support their families. They don't have a, a job. Uh, the relationship between men and uh, women and the people are polluted by hatred, by mistrust, uh, by a very aggressive competition, by the uncontrolled search for power and money. Uh, as uh, the message of uh, Pope Francis uh, told us. But there is a craving which is stronger than any other cravings, that is the craving for dignity, as Pope Francis uh, stated while visiting uh, Brazil. And uh, uh, as he indicated that the, in the message that he sent us, uh, there is a state of emergency for human persons as uh, Don Giussani uh, cried many years ago. We have to give uh, human beings uh, their identity back. What is the greatness of human beings? This is essentially uh, the freedom of human beings, the uh, wish and the uh, desire, the cravings uh, that bring uh, human beings uh, to uh, study reality and uh, perceiving uh, the difference between what is good and beautiful and uh, the rest. Uh, by being together with all other human beings uh, to express the constructive uh, thrust. This is the reason why in our history uh, today and in the past, uh, the awareness uh, that the most important factor of any political system is freedom, freedom for persons, for groups, freedom to educate, uh, uh, free enterprise, and the freedom to build. So uh, our cry uh, that there is a state of emergency is acute and dramatic because we run the risk of being submerged by uh, wrecks and debris to get anesthetized and to cancel the wishes of our heart if our cravings are not educated or oriented, and if we uh, give up the wish to compare ourselves with reality, we will fail. The uh, devastating presence of power, as it was defined by Don Giustani, the great homologation mentioned by Pasolini, are not only disastrous names, that but they are the evident and real horizon in which we live, i.e. Uh, the power which does not hesitate to find any means uh, to anesthetize the desires and the wishes of human beings. Uh, the great President Havel in the New Year's Eve uh, in the 90s, uh, he stated, uh, we uh, have a weak morale. We uh, are no longer concerned about other people. We are skeptical, uh, mistrusting, and are able to transmit young persons uh, the a certainty that we don't have. We prefer to relinquish uh, freedom. And uh, as Eliot said, we are dreaming 
designing uh, systems which are so perfect that nobody will need to be a human being. So uh, culture, our society uh, reflect uh, this attempt to give up uh, responsibility and to leave everything in the hands of politicians so that they can redress the world. But we are here today, we are together, uh, together with many, many persons. Many of the persons who are here are not those who organize uh, the meeting. Again, if we are here uh, and are, are so different because of culture, ethnic group, religion, well, we are here because we don't want to be deprived uh, or we don't want to relinquish uh, freedom. We don't want uh, others uh, uh, to steal hope from us, as uh, Pope Francis uh, stresses. The meeting is born because uh, there are persons who have been touched uh, by the meeting with a human person who was able to stir their hopes again. And this is the reason why the meeting was uh, created and organized. This is the reason why we are still here today. In the friendship with Don Giussani, um, uh, we are rooted as we were in 50 years ago in this friendship. We know that we can live as uh, human persons and we are trained uh, to recognize the greatness, the prominence of our uh, desires. And uh, day after day, we begin and we learn to be confronted with the challenges of the life and the needs uh, of others and of ours needs. And this happens not simply because we are deducting uh, ideas from certain principles. This happens because we have had a long experience and we are continuing to experience life. As Don Caron wrote in the newspaper Repubblica while commenting the uh, encyclical letter entitled Lumen Fide, we cannot uh, defeat darkness by speaking of life. We must shine light. President, uh, you uh, made your inaugural speech in the Parliament uh, in April the 29th by stressing that you are aware of your limitations and you concluded your speech by uh, mentioning David and Goliath. We share uh, your feelings. We share the uh, feeling of being limited. We don't think that we are better than others, and we share the idea of David and Goliath. We uh, can share the deep uh, feeling of responsibility that you continue to stress. You never get tired of doing that. We would like to share what you defined the uh, subversive language of truth. So we would advocate that this meeting could uh, influence human beings by using this language, not that of ideologies. Uh, we want to be able to recognize the truth of human beings, uh, their wishes and their desires, having the heart and the mind open to uh, accept well, what uh, is good and true uh, offered by human beings. So the um, words of persons who really are able to pick up the challenges of reality, people who are uh, positive on their fate, people who are passionate and willing to learn, to construct, uh, to know and to assist, this is the contribution that this meeting uh, will offer in order to uh, build uh, what is good for the country and for the whole world. We must acknowledge that there is an ideal continuity between the meeting of the day and the visit that uh, President Napolitano uh, paid to the meeting in 2011. The recollection of the historical visit and the weight of the words of the President, I think, signed not only our experience and our history, because the words uh, the President had pronounced uh, uh, has proved uh, to be uh, profoundly uh, topical and has a, had an impact on the life of, of the whole national community. So we are here again today to uh, renovate our gratitude to President Napolitano and to continue to learn uh, from him and his witness. The President has uh, uh, given, uh, um, has met uh, our friend uh, Roberto Fontolan 
and the uh, meeting has been uh, recorded, uh, recorded with the support of Rai Quirinale, uh, which we will see together to open this meeting. Thank you. Signor Presidente, innanzitutto. Mr. Prime Minister, let us thank you very much for your willingness to come uh, on this opening day. Mr. President, actually, thank you for giving this interview. We are certainly going to focus on Italy after a time of inclusion and ideals that seems to be paralyzed. Uh, what it seems lacking is that that vision uh, that was uh, so famous with the uh, fathers of the European Union in the post-war period, what is the, the disease affecting Europe and how can it get better? First of all, I'd like to send out a um, message of friendship and trust to your meeting. I'm thinking about young people that fill up the huge meeting room in the Rimini and I hope they can contribute mm, as we expect all young generations to contribute to a new development stage for our country and for the whole continent. What is the sickness affecting Europe? Well, the straightforward answer would be Europe is uh, sick because it is lacking economic and social development. Europe cannot grow adequately. It is losing speed. It is losing in terms of competitivity. And this is certainly a fact. This is truly one of the fundamental causes for the crisis Europe is going through. Looking at the past, we see that it has been extremely rewarding, but a word of wor warning that the crisis that we are going through in Europe is part of the global crisis. Since 2009, finds uh, its roots way back. There's a loss of dynamism that Europe experienced uh, way back in the past. Nearly at the beginning of the new century, in the new millennium. And in the following years, Soon after the development of the single currency, obviously it is not the single currency which is to be blamed for wha what happened, but it had not, it hasn't been able to give the thrust it was expected to give because other important elements were lacking, so as to make the economic and social growth as dynamic as we wanted it to be in Europe. So this is certainly again one first fact. Often time I say that for some decades, up until the 80s, we've been going through a very, very um, happy stage of history in Europe. Year on year, people would leave better, would feel more joined together, and whenever new countries would join the European Union, uh, they would see an important leap forward. The example of Spain, for, for example, fits very well in this picture. Uh, so these countries were entering the United Europe at times after experience of dictatorship. So not only did, we, did they see economic and social development, but also democratic political uh, enhancement. So why do we still need Europe and what kind of Europe do you think is required? Well, in Europe we're going through a time of crisis and by way of completion of the previous answer, I believe that many people haven't understood many large part of the public, many citizens, and especially so the ruling classes haven't understood that the world was changing. And Europe could not stay still. Europe had to adjust to this transformation process which has been uh, afterwards named as the process of globalization. This brought about a dramatic change of all the um, equilibria worldwide. Why do we, do we still need Europe today? Well, 
Europe is not required to grant uh, domestic peace. This is not just a hope. I believe it can certainly be considered as uh, something to take for granted. But what we need is the feeling of unity and greater integration. Otherwise, Europe runs the risk of being submerged by the globalization process, thus losing ground dramatically. And Europe also runs the risk of speaking with a very weak voice, so much so as not to extract first the values that are long, the long past history has written down in the European identity. What should Europe do to try and regain its stance, not to be submerged by globalization. Well, Europe, first and foremost, should be better aware of itself. Europe should not forget the uh, founding principles of the European project uh, as uh, Monet, Schumann, de Gasperi, and Adenauer uh, laid them out. Um, historical cultural foundations were laid down as the main element enshrining European identity, European culture, something that developed also by means of cross fertilization processes. I'd like to recall that Pope Benedict XVI was talking about the European culture that was very much the result of the meeting up together between Athens, Jerusalem, and Rome. And uh, this has lost momentum. This is, is now much more blurred. We contributed also to scientific, technology, productive, and social development at world level. Europe stands as a model, even when it comes to, uh, when it comes to terms of uh, a social economy and market economy. The European model is uh, rich uh, in uh, civil um, values, uh, in the values of participation and brotherhood uh, that permeates the European model. And this is something that we have to understand and we have to make sure that it's this uh, features uh, stay on in the near future. In order not to lose this heritage, uh, we have to be able to compete with the countries that have grown um, more than that was expected. We have to be at the level with the challenges, the challenges of innovation, competitiveness, productivity. These are the challenges that uh, demand an adjustment of our uh, social and market economy. In today's Europe, what we see prevailing are technicalities, uh, uh, formalisms, relativisms, uh, uh, just to use a um, word that uh, Pope Benedict uh, would use. Well, technicalities obviously are mm, very much uh, referred to when we talk about uh, changes to treaties, no agreements, no rules, and this certainly is part and parcel of a development process for the integration of Europe. But we have now become maybe victims uh, of a uh, language that has been turned into a code. Uh, all resolutions include uh, um, many definitions uh, that would need being translated in a common language, something to be understood by all citizens at large. So uh, even um, institution technicalities, a legal uh, technique play a role, as well as uh, the uh, techniques that are required to draft uh, balances in economic policies. But what is certainly required is a strong sense of a mission for Europe. Europe has a mission to play in a world that is changing rapidly and that should not miss the contribution coming by the heritage of Europe. Who is building Europe today? Can you identify any signs uh, pointing out some kind of recovery in Europe? Well, I believe that what is making up Europe today is the meeting amongst young people, young people that see themselves as European rather than just as Italian, Germans, Spaniards, uh, and so on and so forth. Now, I don't wish to just pay lip service uh, to young people as such, but just think, for example, about the Erasmus program. Erasmus program has contributed enormously to have people 
understand each other, even in terms of languages, and to understand one's own uh, culture, their one's own culture. And this is how Europe may be built. Europe is also being built in the major European uh, scientific research centers. I visited, for example, CERN in Geneva. I visit the Nuclear Technology Center near The Hague in the Netherlands. And in each of these centers, there are hundreds and hundreds, sometimes even thousands of researchers, um, young people, young men, young women that work together paving the way to the future, not just for our, our continent. These young people are so I going to reach important goals uh, for the European culture and European science. And I believe that Europe is also being built by countries that are, are, have just overcome difficult moments, as for example, the countries of the Balkan uh, Europe that uh, have just celebrated very sad anniversaries and that of Srebrenica where there has been war fought amongst the brothers. And for many of these countries, uh, joining Europe was an objective. Many succeeded in that as Slovenia and Croatia. Other are knocking at the door and uh, you have to heed that and open the door to them, that these countries are going to build Europe. There are other very important mm, countries, such as uh, Poland. Poland, for example, contributed importantly um, to Europe. It, it certainly was marked by a harsh past. Europe had, uh, or Poland had. Uh, become very much opposed to Germany and Russia and to the peoples of uh, Germany and Russia. But now this is all forgotten. And what we see before us today is uh, a state-of-the-art Poland in terms of European integration. Poland indeed is being led by a country that has recovered and brought forward uh, the extraordinary experience of Solidarność. This is what uh, Europe is, uh, this is where Europe is being made. Now, going back to young people, uh, as you said, um, Mr. President, certainly traveling around, uh, starting together, um, developing ties uh, 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 is all an important dimension in Europe. Uh, there are people that believe that this could lead uh, to the national sentiment being weakened. Uh, um, others can mm, look at this uh, program such as Erasmus as uh, something promoting the brain drain. Uh, how do you see this? Well, I don't think we should uh, have any fears uh, such as the one that you refer to. I believe that young people can uh, make the future for themselves and for our continent even when they travel away from their domestic countries, joining efforts together, working together. Not only are they training together or educating themselves together, but they indeed, uh, I believe that uh, research should be entered into jointly. I would never stop a young students from traveling abroad because I firmly believe that all young people traveling abroad certainly wish to go back to Italy enriched, better contributing uh, to uh, their own country. I don't think that the national identity is going to get lost, not at all. The national identity certainly is not going to be erased, but is going to be fully integrated in the European identity, becoming European, being truly European. Doesn't mean, doesn't mean stopping being Spaniards, French, or Germans. It means that your own national um, history and vocation find a even higher level. The title of the meeting is uh, the human person emergency. Well, I believe that we are going through an emergency at the time, at this time, in terms of a very marked spiritual, cultural impoverishment. So I see that there is an uh, immaterial impoverishment, and uh, who may react to that? 
culture could react to that, as well as institutions. Certainly, they could do more, more than they could do more than what they actually do. Educational systems that could react to that. Even mass media could contribute importantly, and social organizations, uh, and as well as uh, organizations drawing inspiration from faith, could contribute. And I believe, by the way, that uh, certainly the Catholic Church is contributing importantly, as uh, this is perfectly visible to all. Thank you very much, Mr. President, uh, and uh, I'd like to convey to you the embrace of the all large people of the meeting. Thank you, and best wishes. Professor Vittadini. Professor Vittadini, President of the Foundation for Subsidiarity, will tell us about uh, the exhibition, A Symphony from the New World, that uh, Mr. Letter has just visited. Well, uh, good afternoon. How comes that we decided to organize an exhibition of e on Europe uh, uh, this time, which indeed is not one of the most urgent problems? Uh, Europe indeed was not uh, recently fully appreciated by many politicians. I'll try to answer this question uh, by telling you that two years ago, when President Napolitano visited us, there was an exhibition entitled 150 years of subsidiarity, i.e. the ability of the country to have, uh, to build itself uh, bottom up. And, uh, so uh, this uh, DNA oriented on uh, construction and building is still there. And uh, in the face of the crisis, which has worsened. So being here uh, today to speak about the symphony of the new world, and this is a provocation uh, because uh, Europe uh, united from the Atlantic Ocean to the Urals, i.e. wider than it is today, is an intentional provocation, questioning the uh, contest and the nature of Europe. The title is uh, Europe of the People. Europe uh, that is based on a very specific idea of the human being uh, who have a, a, a very unique value. With common elements uh, in the Catholic, uh, liberal and socialist uh, uh, culture, why are we drawing the attention on that? Well, first of all, at the root of the unification of Europe, there is no technical or economic problem, as we can see in the first part of the exhibition. The founding father, fathers, the Gaspari, the Nauer, Schumann, Monet, Spinelli, did something which was like a miracle uh, after uh, uh, years of uh, war, with 12 million uh, victims, uh, uh, also outside Europe, but the majority of them were European, the people who fought each other's uh, um, joint forces. And this is unique in the history of uh, Europe. The war of 100 years, the war of 30 years, that was the first time in history when uh, people who were at war, who lost their parents or their children, are united because they understand that war is the consequence of a uh, dictatorship, totalitarianism, uh, which is the, the result of uh, a philosophy which is against uh, human beings. On the contrary, uh, the idea of the exhibition is this. What unites us is stronger than what divides us. So our ideals and faith is something which is great and really operational. Sometimes it's difficult to reconcile our daily quarrels. We concentrate more on details. On the contrary, for the founding fathers, we, uh, well, they went beyond that. 
And there is a second part in the first part of the exhibition concerning the refounding of Europe. Another miracle, those who were there before the collapse of the wall, uh, and the wall collapsed in 1989 without world wars. So the Eastern countries are now united to Western Europe. And uh, now uh, the, uh, a country like Lithuania has the presidency of the European Union for the first time in history. Uh, uh, union which is based on ideals as well expressed uh, in a book when uh, Vaclav Havel was a, def a dissident and uh, uh, the, the book was The Power of Those Who Have No Power. And the only uh, weapon was life in uh, truth uh, opposed to life in lie, as uh, stressed by Pope Francis earlier this morning. So Europe uh, is at the center. That indicates that ideals can change history. Those who do not believe that should uh, look at this. Uh, and it, this is the most prominent uh, aspect in recent history. So uh, what can we learn from, this ideal, uh, from these ideals? As Emilia said a few minutes ago, uh, this is a time of crisis, and the crisis is similar to that of 1946. Italy, for the first time, uh, is in a way demoted in the ranking of countries. We have enormous problems, uh, loans from the banks, unemployment, very high taxes, uh, uncontrolled public expenditure, a very high number of school dropouts, uh, an enormous uh, uh, debt, uh, the need to build uh, public works, the um, laws concerning the defense of the landscape and the environment, and so on and so forth. Uh, so uh, I think that, as it was in 1946, it uh, is extremely important to join forces, and this is more important than any divisions. Uh, uh, many of us, uh, Mr. Uh, Prime Minister, uh, perceive that your attempts are extremely important for the common good. The very same reasons uh, um, why we applauded Mr. Monti last year and the reason why we are uh, sharing the same spirit of President Napolitano. So the common good at the time of crisis is our top priority. Apparently, there are uh, opposite extremisms which seem to use such difficulties as a pretext to have the pol political economic situation explode. The worse, uh, the better, they think. Today, apparently, social and political life is experienced uh, through cynicism, like the times of uh, the Prince of Machiavelli, or in the search of the particular interest, according to Guicciardini. And uh, uh, to quote a more recent uh, uh, statement, I'd like to uh, quote uh, uh, the great singer Enzo Iannacci, who mentioned a clean man divided by half. Uh, uh, well, the uh, uh, memory that the, the, the more you go inside, the less uh, you found. Uh, human beings cut by half, meaning that they have no ideals, they are unaccomplished. People who cannot uh, see reality. They speak of something uh, in which people are not interested in. They are not concerned with unemployment. They are not interested in people who cannot build and cannot lose time. They speak about lies uh, as if that was their interest. Without ideals, you cannot see and perceive reality. Uh, Havel talked about uh, life in truth, and he mentioned the brewer who uh, told to the secretary of the party, not that the communists were wrong, that, but the beer was disgusting, and he was replaced. Be uh, uh, he believed in uh, truth, uh, and uh, uh, being uh, true means that you have to tell the truth, uh, tell that the crisis is uh, very difficult. But uh, this is what we receive. Uh, not because we are better than others, not because we hold the truth, 
We say this because this is part of our responsibility and a very heavy one. We are committed, we are mandated to collaborate, to defend the common being, uh, to be present, uh, uh, not to speak of ourselves or to look for hegemony. We need to serve this country. And uh, this is not something uh, which is uh, used to divide us from the others. This is something uh, which stresses that we have to serve a higher ideal, and that uh, is that we have to draw attention on the fundamental things. We have to tell the truth. And uh, let's go back to Europe. Europe. Why Europe? Uh, it's a, a question of method of adopting truth about being practical, about avoiding lies. Uh, but uh, contents are also very important. A lot of lies have been told in the past years. We were heard that uh, Europe is the cause of the crisis, uh, the crisis due uh, to the euro and so on. We are part of the uh, European Union, and we are 8% of the world population. In the year 2050, it will be 6% of the uh, world population. So, uh, uh, so uh, if mm, the policies are adopted in other countries, we won't be able to survive. We used to be a big country in a small world. Now we are small, a small country in a big world. So there is a fundamental need. We uh, must tell the truth. For companies, single market means five, 500 million consumers. And uh, being able to uh, accomplish uh, uh, the construction of infrastructure so that we can be connected to the rest of the world. We know very well that there are companies uh, who, which are very bad performers uh, whereas others who export are performing very well and they export to the European Union. There has been a growth of 10% of the GDP thanks to the single currency. So uh, if we had no euro, we would have died. Uh, out, uh, of the 130 billion euro of the uh, 2013 budget, 47% uh, will be spent for policies for growth and 80% uh, for the uh, disadvantaged region, region. So we need Europe. Uh, Europe 2020, uh, the uh, rate of uh, the uh, GDP of Europe will have to be made up of 20% manufacturing sector, fixed uh, uh, gross investment 23%, uh, investment in equipment 9%, uh, international trade 25%, and export without Europe by SMEs 25%. If we can't accomplish that, we will become part of the third world. And we need to tell the truth. Uh, we are quarreling for uh, silly things, and if we continue with that, we uh, will fail. So, uh, and this is my fourth point, uh, we are not accepting any kind of Europe. We are not saying yes to Europe uh, critically. Uh, let me mention an interview uh, by the uh, philosopher and sociologist from Germany, Jürgen Habermas. He states, and I quote, uh, till now the European Union has been supported and monopolized by political elites, and the result is a very dangerous asymmetry between the democratic participation of people and the benefits that their governments are drawing for themselves. The more national people take heed of the profound influence that the decisions of the European Union have on their daily lives, the more they will be interested in uh, exerting and exercising their democratic rights as citizens of the European Union, end quote. So the European Union should get started again from the individuals. The crisis of the European Union is due uh, to a lack of awareness of what we are. So in the second part of the exhibition, we have people who have uh, accepted uh, to turn uh, or to have a turning point in their lives. And they use macroeconomics as a great opportunity. There are students attending the Erasmus exchanges. There are many uh, uh, Italians studying or making their careers 
uh, in foreign universities, in universities abroad. Uh, there are entrepreneurs, uh, uh, professors, scientists, and uh, people of different ethnic groups who are experiencing Europe. Because if we are closed to Europe, we will end up in uh, nowhere. But if we feel that we have our responsibility, we can uh, exploit this opportunity. And this does not mean denying our national identities. Now let me uh, quote some examples in the exhibition. The Bishop on the Archdiocese of Sarajevo, uh, Pedro Sudar, um, the President Napolitano uh, mentioned that. Well, this bishop is working um, to support 14 schools with 5,000 students. And this project is there to respect what is different uh, teaching uh, Muslims to remain Muslims, uh, uh, Catholics to be good Catholics, and the same goes for Orthodox uh, believers. The meeting uh, is uh, present in that. Tatiana Kazastina, another example, tells us that in Moscow there are many uh, Protestant denominations and also there are many Catholics. They talk to each other. They make projects together. They uh, are no longer afraid of the others. If you studied history, uh, you uh, should know the negative effects of uh, religion wars. Again, uh, Lucio Rossi, mentioned by the president uh, from the CERN, uh, tells us that a turn was founded together with political Europe because they believe that reality is rational. It can be understood, uh, 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 you know, uh, it, it's not by chance that it was founded uh, there because reality is rational, can be understood, can be investigated. Let me make another example concerning uh, solidarity. There are uh, uh, some uh, Italian families uh, who, after the appeal of uh, Benedict XVI, are collaborating with Greek uh, uh, families. Uh, the, now we have the European Food Bank Network, uh, uh, which has been set up to use food surpluses. And now we have an, uh, an European Federation, where, uh, which are supporting more than one million people in Europe, you will hear about the uh, tales of, of, and the very good examples. There are people who believe and experience uh, Europe uh, in its reality. So there is uh, an ideal uh, uh, vision. Uh, 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 this is uh, the reason why, uh, Mr. Prime Minister, uh, that uh, we are not in favor of any European unions. We want a European Union uh, centered on human beings, as stated in the uh, International uh, Decla or Universal Declaration of Human Rights. We are searching for meaning. Uh, we uh, want to support uh, the uh, secret nature of human beings, uh, as Habel said, as a starting point, uh, joining and united uh, different ethnic groups and religions. So it's uh, pluralistic. Uh, the uh, Christian uh, uh, roots of Europe have turned into the roots of uh, liberalism and socialism. We are uh, united and uh, we can uh, offer integration to migrants. We don't want uh, uh, Europe or uh, uh, red tape or, or, or um, uh, useless uh, European Parliament. We are in favor of uh, vertical subsidiarity. And uh, we are uh, supporting also horizontal subsidiarity. Uh, we don't want Brussels to be a, a dead letter. We want to have the different societies to be involved in a dialogue. And uh, again, uh, we don't want the Europe of uh, the financial world, uh, but we want to support uh, uh, those who are correct in the world of finance. We want to support SMEs and uh, social actions. We uh, don't want a, a, a greedy, uh, e e Europe. 
Uh, the U.S. Uh, invests 20 percent of the budget to federal issues. We uh, just use 1 percent of our resources for the European Union. Indeed, if you want to implement projects, you need money. And we want to have a, an open, united Europe against the uh, uh, international crisis. We want to have Europe as a bridge open to the world. Uh, we don't uh, want Europe closed uh, against uh, the Mediterranean area. Sometimes we had forgotten the role of Mediterranean countries. We want Europe to be open to the east uh, uh, to Russia. Russia is part of Europe and its culture. So uh, a battle uh, is being waged uh, in the uh, political arena. We need to be together. To conclude, And uh, to further convince that this uh, exhibition is extremely important, I'd like to tell you that this exhibition reminds us what Mr. Don Giussani said in 1995. What builds is just uh, uh, love uh, enlightened by truth in anybody. It's a factor of peace, construction of, of a, a common home, which can be a shelter against desperation and strengthen every person for all the others. This is the root of Europe and it should be continued. Prende ora la parola il and now I wish to give the floor to uh, Italian Prime Minister, Mr. Enrico Letta. Thank you very much for this very warm welcome, first of all. Thank you very much for providing me the opportunity to be here. And I wish to react to the questions that Emilia Guarnieri and Giorgio Vittadini, whom I thank most warmly for their passion uh, and their commitment, uh, have raised. Uh, uh, I'd like to talk about Italy and Europe and the time we are going through. Two years ago, actually it was August the 21st, it was uh, slightly later and we were sitting here with George and Emilio but there was also myself together with Mr. Lupi. We were sitting together at the same panel listening to the introductory address of the Italian President of the Republic, Mr. Napolitano, who was opening indeed the that edition's meeting. Uh, it was a very complicated summer the crisis was starting to bite from the social and economic points of view, but uh, what we could perceive is that uh, Europe could not find a way to react to that crisis. What um, President Napolitano said then, uh, you probably remember that, uh, we were listening to what he was saying, and uh, all the time we realized that, that his address was not just uh, any address, that the day we were going through was not any day. We were indeed going through a day that would change the history of our country, as actually was the case. After that address, after that appeal, he launched to institutions, uh, politics, the good men of goodwill. Uh, indeed, he said, speak the language of truth. So this is what President Napolitano said. And ever since then, a time of change started for our country. As a matter of fact, I never imagined two years ago that uh, two years on we would find ourselves in such a different situation. Anyway, the change started then, here with the President's address to the meeting. And President Napolitano is so much persuaded of what he said that he re refer to that in a, his introductory remark to this edition of the meeting, but I also want to remind you that he in referred 
to the same uh, thing when he accepted being reappointed as the President of the Italian Republic. And he said again the same thing, i.e. speak the language of truth. So we have to go back to what President Napolitano said two years ago. And that is important and the different points of view we all read in the papers over the past few days. And in uh, 2011, uh, spread was uh, raising up at the, the end of the world seemed so close. And over the very last few days, uh, interest rates are dwindling, the spread is again uh, decreasing to a lower level vis-a-vis -vis what was the case uh, before it started raising. This means that over the past two years we've gone through a very difficult path, but we have to speak the language of truth to understand what these two years uh, have uh, included. I'll be talking about Europe later on. Now, let me focus uh, on Italy. Politics and institutional rules did not work. The set of rules that we have in our hands did not work. Uh, the rules that we are following, the world of politics and institutions, could not, did not hold true. So if we have to speak the language of truth, what we have to say is that we are given a great opportunity. We're now witnessing some kind of recovery. And uh, we have to stress the urgency um, so that as from September 1st uh, within the Italian Parliament, great attention should be focused on the most urgent need. What we need to change is the electoral law. The electoral law as it stands does not work. Uh, what we have to have is a new act uh, that is to be adopted hopefully in October so as to enable each of us to choose uh, who we want to represent us uh, so that the citizen becomes the true judge. I'd like to quote Ruffini from Romania. Uh, 25 years ago, he was killed by the Red Brigade, and he said that citizens should become again the ones that uh, make decisions what we want what we want to have is an electoral law that empowers citizens so that they can judge for themselves they can elect what they want uh, and who's going to represent them how parliament uh, should uh, do away with the public financing with the state financing of the political parties so that citizens are granted the possibility to contribute to their own political parties if so they wish and other constitutional reforms are also most needed. Such reforms would lead uh, to a change uh, in the ruling classes and should leave room for efficient democracies with a good decision-making power. The language of truth requires uh, that we should not pretend that nothing has happened at the political elections, at the general elections. An earthquake actually took place way then and only somebody looking at things with the superficiality wouldn't realize that. All political forces were changed. The way of being of Italian citizens changed. A very special vote is the one that was cast uh, in the general elections, in the latest general elections, and uh, we have to realize that this has happened. We have to find a way to react to that because uh, that has been one last appeal for change, and this has to do with all of us. We cannot uh, but lend a ear to that request for change. And Indeed, uh, this is the only way to react to the urgent uh, requests that were voiced uh, by Mr. Vitadini earlier on. So, as for politicians, well, we have to fight against uh, the ideology of the ongoing conflict. Uh, what we wanted to uh, um, promote is uh, the rational leading to a meeting, and the meeting is always better than a conflict. Always.
those uh, who by professions are for conflict want to wage this conflict on an ongoing basis. Those who wage the war for conflict uh, want to uh, draw benefits from uh, permanent conflict. Everything should be covered by conflict because conflict uh, gives a reason to all and uh, may um, justify everything. Problems uh, go on unnoticed because you have just to go on fighting. And if you want to fight, then uh, it basically disseminates some kind of fog so as not to consider the real issues because people are then brought into non-understanding the problems but what they see before their eyes is just enemies and, fo and foes and friends and foes. So what these people are for is uh, just to keep the conflict going on, uh, just to focus on the enemies, uh, um, not heeding the good faith of people. What people are to be talked is the language of truth. You can't just say to your voters, vote me, otherwise our enemy is going to vote, because the, uh, our country has gone through years where the only message being um, passed on to the voters were the following, vote me, because otherwise our foes will win. And all the problems remained unnoticed, totally neglected. Meeting again uh, is much more important. Uh, meeting implies that our identities should not be totally forgotten. Meeting doesn't imply that uh, different identities and differences disappear. Meeting may only scare those who are uncertain about their own values, about their own identity. The strength of a meeting is uh, connected to sound and strong identities who don't need uh, to speak evil about their um, others. They don't uh, close up and become isolated. What we certainly do not want is a dialogue among deaf. This is not what we want. We want to have clear identities meeting up together. And Italians should be told with the language of truth, as I was saying earlier on, that you can be persuasive if you put together a credible vision, if the different bullets of your vision is clearly presented. You cannot persuade Italian voters to vote somebody just because you don't want your enemy to win. This is a way that we don't approve of. This is something that uh, has certainly negatively affected the country. Voters uh, have been told into conflicting one amongst the others. Uh, you know, Italy is a country of the Ghibellines and the Guelphs. We are the countries of a, a country that is qualified by the extreme parochialism. What we just need is a little spark and the conflict of all against the others uh, takes off. So when we talk about the title of the meeting, um, the central role to be played by mankind in that state of emergency for the human person, I wish to quote something that is well known to all of us. I'm sure that Don Giussani greatly approved of the eighth psalm. Pope VI uh, in 1969 uh, gave the eighth psalm to the astronauts traveling to the moon. I was reminded of the dialogue I had with the Italian astronaut. Look at Parmigiano, I'm not sure where he is at the moment. I wish to greet him anyway because he makes our country stronger. He contributes importantly to the Italian world of science. 
Some aid says, if I look at the sky, which is the work of your hands, if I look at the stars and the moon, what is meant for you to recall him, the son of man for you to heed him? Each of us is unrepeatable and different, and this is what makes uh, the world beautiful, is there's nobody which is exactly the same as any other. And this is a very trivial concept, but if you think about it just for a minute, then you understand that everything uh, com becomes clear. We are all irrepeatable, unrepeatable. Nobody can do away with themselves. Institutions, the community, ourselves have a duty. The ult ultimate duty is to give each and every one the possibility to enhance one's talent because we all have a mission to play, that being unrepeatable. I think about the role of uh, education, which I understand is the role uh, one of the most important uh, problems with the role of students uh, the ro and the work of uh, teachers and all those who operate in the world of the education. This is key. It is key now and it is going to be even more important in our programs. I'm thinking about uh, uh, the first financing uh, for um, building of schools. Our schools are, are falling to pieces, which is one, again, of the fact of these 100 days. I'm thinking about uh, the need for uh, change. A national community may win if all of us are aware of our missions and of our mission being unrepeatable and fundamental. And uh, if we look at the other facet of the same thing, you see that uh, our key attention should be based on the person, the individual, the family, and with the state making things uh, smoothless. Then subsidiarity becomes uh, pivotal. The subsidiarity should lay at the very basis of our policies. Subsidiarity is um, being taken to the center of our policies. By the way, on uh, Tuesday next, um, an act is going to be passed with a no need for additional uh, clauses. And this is important in its content and the indication it provides. This tells us uh, that um, bureaucracy should prevail um, if any citizen has a right to a document to some kind of reply uh, within a certain deadline. If that uh, uh, is not done, the state will have to pay and reimburse you. So this, again, is what makes the role of individual citizens central. We are to focus on uh, citizens' requirements. We have to focus on people. All too often we've been confronted with uh, increasing taxes, increasing public expenditure, with an increasing inefficiency of services. What we want to see is a lowering of taxes as much as we can, and the public expenditure should be curbed. Uh, and uh, what is most important is that citizens, again, and individuals uh, should play a key role. I'm now also going to think about uh, companies. Uh, companies uh, uh, should see their invoices being paid by the state. Many uh, companies have been forced to close, uh, to shut down because uh, the state would not pay them. This has to come to an end. Uh, each of us is unrepeatable and I feel very strongly of this and uh, um, thank you very much for referring to David and Goli. Uh, um, I'd like to thank uh, Guarnieri for quoting that. I know what this constraint is, I do feel I have a mission, and this mission is responding to the strong need for our country to get away from the crisis. Our country is aware of it being able to get away from the crisis, and I'd like to make sure that nobody breaks with this path of hope that we have started walking along.
I know that uh, the crisis can be overcome. We have to look ahead of us and get out from the crisis. But if we stick looking, uh, we, if we stick looking to the past, then the crisis is never going to be done away. We have to look ahead. We like we have to like ahead to look ahead at the future to leave this terrible crisis behind. I firmly believe that uh, we have to stress this, uh, as this is very important. All those who are going to focus on the common interest on getting away from the crisis are going to uh, be awarded by the I Italian population. What is the language of truth? If uh, we turn now to Europe. We firmly believe that our identity is very much based on the values of Europe. These values may certainly have an impact on the world, and positively so, as they did in the past. The central rule of the individual, the central rule of the rights of individuals, the social role to be played by families, the rights and in, in environmental protection, the role of culture. This is again another subject that we started lay emphasis off as it had been forgotten. We're just starting uh, moving the first steps and we have to focus uh, our development policies on that. We are also keen on highlighting the substantial de democracy. All countries pay lip service to democracy. What we require is substantial democracy with a safeguard of human rights. All such values make up Europe is part and parcel of our identity. Indeed, if Europe joins together at, at the world, in the world, that has changed, as Georgia was saying earlier on. Only if Europe succeeds uh, in uh, getting closer to citizens, truly in uh, becoming efficient uh, in solving problems rather than creating them, only then will we succeed. And this is true both for us as Italians and us as Europeans. Only then will we succeed in uh, playing a leading role. We cover a small area in Italy with or Europe actually um, is populated by some 500,000, 500 million people. The world is much larger than that. If we look at the power, uh, at the size of the continent, you see that Europe certainly may not be able to play the role uh, that uh, we did play in the past if we just look at the figures. And yet Europe has been the heart of the crisis. Five, six years have gone by, uh, and everybody has uh, talked about the crisis of Europe, the crisis of Europe. Uh, we have been blamed over the, for the global recession that affected the world. Uh, this crisis, as a matter of fact, did not start off in Europe. Uh, indeed, uh, this major crisis was triggered in the world of finance in the US, and yet, uh, in Europe, we've been blamed for this crisis. And why is that? Well, because uh, all the others got away from the crisis. The United States are out of the crisis, uh, whereas we are proving incapable of uh, getting out of the crisis, that leading to global recession. So in this last part of my contribution, I wish to talk about the subject for 2014. 2014 may indeed be the year of the new beginning, of a new birth for Europe. It's going to be a crucial year for Europe. First and foremost, we're going to have elections. Elections are going to be held for the European Parliament, and much is at stake. If Europe is not providing answers or is reacting uh, in the wrong way, well, the European Parliament is going to be uh, very little pro-European itself. We should follow the indications as given by the exhibition. By the way, you should look at it because it points out to the way forward. And if we do that, we can see 2014 as the year of the rebirth for Europe, the year for a new beginning, starting from the awareness 
of the success of the past European history. And one first element of such awareness has been referred to by Mr. Vitadini Luron. We should indeed realize that the six-month presidency for Europe is held by a country that 13 years ago was part of the Soviet Union. I'm referring to Latvia. This country was the enemy 13 years ago. Was, we would have referred to them as them rather than us. Now we talk about Latvia referring to them as us. Our leaders are now, again, the country with, uh, holding the uh, six months presidency for Europe is now in the hands of Latvia. Europe has a successful past history. Why is that? Well, Europe is still attracting countries. Um, July last, a new country has entered Europe, Croatia. And in January, you're going to have an additional country within uh, Euro. And, and that is going to be another country that belonged to the Soviet Union. At the latest edition of the European Council, we started negotiations uh, for the accession uh, of Serbia. And Belgrade can certainly be termed uh, as the heart of Europe. The whole of the past history refers to Belgrade as being the heart of Europe. So we have to be aware of our successful story. We have to be aware of the fact that we should deserve such success. We have to be able to shoulder our responsibilities. And the world, what is required now is, is a Europe that can shoulder its responsibilities. I'm thinking about the image coming from uh, Egypt. We cannot stay silent, faced with uh, uh, the mishap uh, and the dis disruption occurring in Egypt. Nowadays, we are confronted with uh, such dramatic images. And yet we refer to tour operators uh, and uh, Italian people traveling uh, uh, to Egyptian uh, holiday resorts. So on the one hand, we have such dramatic images. On the other hand, uh, we have such absurd preoccupations. So think about Europe as somebody that can shoulder responsibilities. We cannot not shoulder responsibilities. And President Mpetigano referred to that, as well as Giorgio Vittadini, Mr. Vittadini referred to that. If we travel towards the Rimini airport from here and to catch a flight in 50 minutes, maybe an hour, 60 minutes, you can get as far as Sarajevo. You can get to Vukovar. You can get to Mostar. You can get to Srebrenica. All these places up until 15 years ago, were the same places, maybe 17, 18 years ago, where the um, names of signifying the shame, the shame uh, that it took. Because Europe uh, had to cope with the dramatic conflict. Never again are we going to bear that shame. And that shame uh, uh, is also to be blamed on us because we didn't react. Europe should be able to shoulder its responsibilities worldwide. Making decisions, for example. I know very well to, to the um, purists of law, to law scholars, uh, to international law uh, scholars uh, may consider me superficial in making this comparison, but the crisis, you know, we started off in the U.S. It was a financial study, this crisis affecting the U.S., and it took very little for them to make a decision and get out of the crisis. The virus, then the contagion, uh, got to us, and uh, we couldn't get away from there. Well, politics has to do with that. Institutions have a role to play. What would happen in the U.S. if they had to follow our rules in the States? I would think, um, I'm thinking what would happen in the States if they had to obey the same rules as we had. 
for example, if they had to put together all the mm, people ruling, ruling in the individual uh, states of the United States, if they had to, to come to a uh, uh, unanimous decision, including all the constitutional courts, uh, all the constitutional courts of individual states, if they had to make one decision, they would never get anywhere. But in the United States, they had one president, one parliament, and one central bank acting independently. So these three institutions made decision at the right time, and thus they left the crisis behind. It took us 30 summits in Europe with uh, press conferences, uh, uh, preparatory meetings, uh, ag agreements being entered into. In Europe, the institutions are such uh, as for no decision ever being made. Uh, we have to change such institutions. We have to head towards that direction because these institutions have to be more closely related to citizens. Because otherwise what happens is what happened in Greece, where citizens voted for the one parliament, that parliament, made decisions, the decisions were not approved of. At a higher level, other decisions were made so that the parliament was um, basically done away with. Uh, and then citizens obviously um, protested against that was in Athens and you know, the crisis started off there and it has to be closed there. Europe started off in Greece uh, for, you know, following the Greek myths. Europe was a princess from Phoenicia, uh, not even a member of the EU, so Europe comes from away from Europe. <laughs> and uh, perhaps Maybe we should look at the visit of Pontiff um, Francis de Lampedusa in the different context. And Europe has to be able to make decisions. What we see is that Europe as it is does not work. Uh, so the subsidiarity principle is not obeyed. Institutions are cold, remote entangled in red tape and bureaucracy. Institutions as they are do not allow for Europe to actually be able to make decisions. At the latest edition, for example, of the summit uh, of Europe, there's been a fight against uh, youth unemployment. The results have been uh, shown and you know the issue of young people and youth unemployment is central and yet We cannot have uh, the rules of Europe just referring to acronyms and referring to the real problems of citizens. We have to have a language which is understood. We have to promote development, the dissemination of labor. Labor is central. Well, labor has to be created. More jobs are to be created. And that has to be accompanied uh, with uh, a very rigorous approach when dealing with uh, public accounts. So, mm, we have understood uh, that running into deficits implying the burden being passed on to our children and certainly those of us who have a family will never be happy to pass on their debts to their children and grandchildren and uh, I this is the same that we have to do as a country as I realized as soon as I got elected whatever we're going to do we're going to do it without entering the new debts because uh, um, too many debts have been entered into in the past when it was far too easy to make debts and now we have to bear the brunt for that. What is most required for a new start is that for finance to cover I the role it it has to play because uh, the crisis started off because the finance uh, got uh, a bigger role uh, um, and uh, this is true for the world of finance and the people that work with finance <laughs> having too much importance playing too large a role. 
speculative bubbles today uh, correspond to what walls used to be. Looking back in history, we've learned uh, that a mistake made by a general caused thousands lives. But how many true lives have been caused? Entrepreneurs and unemployed uh, committed suicide because of the speculative bubble, because of the mistakes made by people working in the world of finance. Speculative bubbles uh, is nowadays what rules used to be in the past. International choices are to be made so that finance plays uh, uh, its role. We have to fight against um, tax havens. That has to be the main objective we should focus upon. We have to understand that certainly finance is necessary, provided that finance uh, play a secondary role vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the financing of enterprises. Finance cannot have a hand in it, an end in itself. When I think about the crisis, I'm often reminded that uh, the crisis, again, was triggered off in the US with a sub subprime um, with the idea that uh, you could just borrow money without ever paying it back thanks to a financial architecture that was granting everybody would make money those who would make it that architecture who would see their salaries uh, um, grow incredibly um, getting as much as a hundred times what they uh, their employee would get and that was completely unbearable I'm from Tuscany and I often think about Pinocchio Collodi the author has its creature Pinocchio bury uh, a little coin uh, uh, in the earth, watering it and try, uh, trusting it would grow a tree with money. Well, obviously, we know that uh, uh, a completely different message has to be disseminated. Finance has to play its role in the new Europe and development and labor should again be our main focus. No debt should ever be incurred, and this may only work, provided that two main concepts obtain. I'd like to refer to something that has affected me very much, vision and courage. Vision and courage are all important. Politics at its highest can disseminate that. There's a famous story of the German Chancellor, Helmut Kohl, um, guiding to the reunification. And uh, when negotiating the modalities for reunification, the key issue was the mark in the East and in the West. Basically, that was the basic issue that West basically was uh, uh, including East Germany, but everybody understood that it would never happen unless equal dignity was granted to all individuals and to both currencies. People at the Bundesbank and in the different ministries were saying to Chancellor Kohl that an exchange rate should be set whereby the East German mark would be uh, uh, valued half as much as the West German mark. And her Chancellor Kohl said, this is not going to happen because this is not just a matter of finance, it is a matter of peoples. And if we're having one single Germany joining together two different po peoples, we have to make sure that the two peoples perceive they are on an equal footing. And if um, 
going against all the advisors. He said that we're going to uh, grant the same value to the East Euro German mark as we have for the West German mark. And he was proven right. I think that we have to uh, relaunch uh, high-level uh, politics. There can be no great choices if uh, politics is not up to that. And unfortunately, we have no good examples of good politics. We have uh, lots of examples of bad politics in Italy. Anyway, uh, uh, we can't do without uh, good politics. We can uh, manage to make it if we have no good politics. So that's an effort uh, we should all make, and we have to be very demanding. We have to uh, ask for transparency, uh, containment of costs, uh, uh, responsibility, uh, change, uh, rejuvenation, and at the same time, we need to be aware that we need to have high-level politics. This is the only way we can make the right important choices. We should be aware that Europeans are uh, really strong, and uh, uh, this is particularly true for Italians. When I'm asked, how can uh, we manage to go on? I have no doubts. Well, first of all, we'll manage. I'm positive that. And we uh, will do that for a very clear reason, because uh, Italians, uh, we do have the heritage of our parents and grandparents, i.e., uh, the importance of time, of land, and beauty. These are three principles which are part of our DNA. Time. And uh, time for us is not something which flows normally. Time for our civilization has been a very special type of time. Time has meant that on any little uh, plot of our land, uh, there was something before us, and they have left an heritage. And we are asked to care for that land because someone else will come after us. So we are requested to maintain and support uh, the love for beauty, which is the real reason why uh, we are attractive to the rest of the world. And that can only uh, come true if we are very careful, very attentive in what we do. And uh, uh, politicians should concentrate on that. They should uh, abandon their vested interest. We have a great opportunity. In uh, the year 2015, we'll have an uh, international uh, exhibition uh, in uh, uh, Milan on the uh, produce of the land and the possibility to uh, eliminate hunger in the world. So time, land, and beauty. And uh, let me uh, conclude on a very important principle, which if we rediscover it will be fully successful and will never be marginalized. I remember uh, what my grandfather, uh, uh, the father of uh, my mother, he was an agronomist in uh, Sardinia after the Second World War. And the first uh, task for such an expert was to uh, work for the um, local administrations to uh, decide uh, on the borders of the uh, farming plots. And he was asked to set the borders of the plots. And he went to the farmers in Sardinia, and uh, he, that uh, he told me as a great uh, example of wisdom uh, which he inherited from the Sardinian farmers. And they used to uh, say, uh, very sound, not being provocative, as the Sardinians can uh, do. Well, uh, Mr. Doctor, I'm sure you're right. Uh, we have to hurry. We have to build the brickworks to set the borders of the farming plots. But these little walls 
um, uh, which uh, for you are just a piece of paper to be delivered to the authorities. For us, they are a work of art because these little walls, these brick works, which are built with the stones of our mountain, none of them is like the next one. And this is so because when in a few years someone will come and see them and they will uh, see whether they have weathered the storm and uh, they will be able to tell whether it's still good or bad, the answer they will give is not, well, uh, they had a person asking them to build uh, uh, the walls uh, hastily because uh, they had to be uh, delivering the paper, so they made it. But well, uh, the farm farmer said, well, it should be beautiful. If I will need more time, I will use that time. I will take that time because I want this little wall to survive in the future. So I learned a lot from that because that is the teaching which describe uh, what Italians are. We have been strong for that very reason. And I do believe that we cannot be defeated if we want to make it. Thank you. Grazie, Presidente, per questo. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Prime Minister, for your words. I indeed think that this is bearing witness, uh, and uh, you really are a person uh, who is uh, making an endeavor to achieve the objectives you set, and uh, this is uh, what we are willing to do. Uh, we want to do what we are preaching. We are safe of what we say. We are sure of what we say. And we want to be at the service of a process full of hopes and of encounters. And of that, we are sure and safe. Now, we have two young university students who collaborated in the organization of the exhibition. We'll ask two questions to uh, our Prime Minister. The names are Sara Tarantini uh, from the School of Law of the University of Milan, fourth year, and Matteo Berti, School of Law from the Catholic University of Milan. Egregio Signor Presidente, mi chiamo Matteo. Uh, Mr. President, my name is Matteo. I am third in, attending the third uh, year at the School of Law at the Uni Catholic University of Milan. As uh, Professor Vitamini said, we are launching a provo provocation. Uh, Europe is defined as a real new world. Young people are really fascinated uh, by um, the idea of attending the university and making a career outside Europe. So how can uh, people like me uh, be uh, part of the process? Uh, is Italy going to be a protagonist or uh, will it continue to be the country uh, young persons are fleeing from in order to be able to make their career and build? Uh, Mr. Prime Minister, my name is Sara, and I am attending uh, the uh, last year of the School of Law at the University of Milan. Uh, in this month, uh, while I was working to prepare the exhibition with other uh, students and uh, university professors, I realized that being critical does not mean uh, concentrating on what is not working or on the weak points of a system. 
Uh, the idea is that of finding its uh, point of strength, uh, supporting and using them uh, as a point of reference. Uh, in your opinion, what are the points of strength of uh, Europe and of Italy which is worth using uh, to rediscover the reasons why it's worth working and being together? Thank you very much. Parto dalla questione dei giovani che citava. Well, the um, issue of uh, young persons mentioned by Matteo. In, indeed, uh, uh, it's indeed uh, one of our uh, priorities. So the work of the first three months of this government concentrated on many issues. But the uh, youth uh, issue is one of uh, the key questions which will continue to be dear to our hearts. So what we did is not enough. In the next uh, one year and a half, uh, um, we have, uh, will be implementing uh, a lot of, of incentives so that companies could hire uh, young persons uh, with uh, um, a new form of uh, contract uh, uh, to avoid temporary jobs, uh, which unfortunately are uh, the only ones offered to young persons. We indeed uh, won't uh, be confining ourselves uh, on youth unemployment. We know very well that young people, uh, uh, or sorry, adult unemployment is uh, indeed uh, terrible. One of the measures we adopted, which has already been turned into a law, is an incentive uh, to entrepreneurs so that they can hire uh, workers who have lost their job, uh, will uh, no longer be supported by the government, and if they are hired by an entrepreneur, that entrepreneur uh, could get uh, uh, the remaining part of uh, government incentives. Uh, let me go back to young people. Uh, we are in an emergency as far as uh, unemployment is concerned. This is the worst, uh, worst issue today. So in the three months, uh, uh, in the first three months of the government, we are working to implement uh, measures in the country and we hope we can attain uh, good results. Uh, this issue also has a uh, European dimension. Uh, in Europe, uh, it's necessary to implement uh, uh, measures in favor of young persons so that we could care uh, uh, this issue uh, as a continent. Here we have uh, a cultural challenge uh, to face. I was talking of that uh, with Emilia and Giorgio. Uh, uh, young persons were at the center in the 60s and the 70s. That was a great issue. If we just think of the discussions of the 90s or the year 2000, uh, young persons have been disregarded. And this is something which happened not only in Italy, but also throughout Europe. Why is it so? That happened because uh, we are, uh, were concentrating on the former young persons and the uh, changes in the demographic pyramid and the uh, changes which happened, uh, the uh, longer life expectancy. So the former uh, young persons of the 60s and the 70s had become at the center of discussion in the 90s and in the uh, year 2000. So the system has uh, forgotten about uh, the uh, marginalization of young persons. Uh, and uh, in the past, young persons were uh, a very important part of the uh, electors. Now things have changed the, and uh, uh, the weight has been shifted and uh, young persons have been marginalized in some countries more than in others. 
Uh, this is a real emergency in Italy. That's why we need extraordinary measures. We have to work in the field of uh, schools and education, which should put, be put at the center of uh, policies in order to uh, make young persons able to remain in the labor market. Uh, we will uh, implement the new youth guarantee starting from the 1st of January. That will be at the heart of our uh, work. As Matteo rightly said, we need to uh, have young persons learning and making experience outside Italy. That's good. And, and we should uh, make incentives uh, to support that, but provided that these people can come back. And uh, uh, our country should be able to attract talents and students from outside. So we need to be able to uh, make exchanges so that all, who, all those people who went abroad could come back. There is a uh, group for subsidiarity. Uh, a meeting will start in a few minutes. Uh, uh, has taken on board a very important uh, uh, project which turned into a draft law and uh, what has turned into a bill to support young persons coming back from abroad. I know that this is not enough. I know that um, often so people say we need more than that. We need uh, more changes. That's true. Uh, anyway, uh, we uh, indeed uh, are uh, a country where uh, cynicism uh, or saying that's not enough is uh, useless. Uh, well, we are able to criticize those who try to do something, those who make attempts. We cannot continue to say, well, we need something more than that. Italy is a country composed of people who are willing to do something who are willing to participate. I'm impressed uh, by the words of Sara. Uh, she said that we have become a, a cynical uh, country where people prefer to stay at the window and criticize the others and not able to pick up responsibilities. Indeed, this country uh, did a lot, has done a lot thanks to the uh, efforts of its citizens, young and old, arts and crafts, SMEs uh, committed, and the ability of our country to uh, uh, turn our entrepreneurs uh, into ambassadors of the Made in Italy philosophy. One of the uh, projects uh, for September is a, a plan called uh, Destination Italy to attract uh, investments uh, into the country. Uh, it's a, a project that we will disseminate uh, all over the world, telling the world that Italy is a country worth investing in. Uh, it's worth uh, coming in Italy, uh, coming to uh, settle in Italy. because there are so many opportunities uh, which are of great interest. Uh, um, so I conclude here. Thank you very much for your warmth. I really uh, l love this, and I will use uh, uh, your support, uh, uh, keeping it in mind uh, during the hard times uh, uh, in the next uh, fall. All we are so committed in this project. We want to convince people in Italy and in the world that Italy can turn again into a choice of life, a, a positive uh, place. Italy is a positive uh, concept. Often so uh, Italians uh, uh, speak of Italy and associate it only to uh, negative things uh, or uh, saying that uh, what is done is not enough. Part uh, of uh, our mission is uh, to convince uh, the others uh, that uh, it's worth uh, choosing Italy as a lifestyle and that w 
will uh, make our country great again, and I'm sure will manage.